Greetings, folks. Lincoln Steffens of McClure's Magazine here, and... <laughs> do you smell that? Ah, the sweet, sweet smell of corruption. It's 1904, and countless American cities are being exposed to this filth, so I've taken it upon myself to bring justice to the common man. I'm what some might call one of the original muckrakers, journalists of this new progressive era who are finally bringing to light political and government injustices. In this new gilded age of ours, I believe many people are complicit in or wrongfully ignorant to the exploitation taking place within government. To quote myself, bribery had become commonplace in city government by the turn of the century. But with many recent advances in publishing technology, the mass production of inexpensive magazines has skyrocketed, reaching a broader audience than ever. I'm editor of McClure's Magazine, where I uncover and write about the corruption in many U.S. cities. So without further ado, let's take a look at today's Honorable Scum. In the article The Tweed Days in St. Louis, I documented the crime uncovered by the city circuit attorney Joseph Falk in 1902. And not to toot my own horn too much, but this is also considered by many to be the first muckraking article published in the U.S. Within it, I expose a city turned decrepit from the abuses of bribes and sold out by civil servants. Falk informed me that after the now infamous William M. Tweed obtained the position as New York mayor, he bribed Republicans to create a new city charter, allowing him and his associates to control the city's finances and steal millions of dollars from taxpayers. Behold this sketch of the perpetrator based on eyewitness descriptions. Not only is old Tweed depicted as quite the shady figure, but he's also leaning on the ballot box with a sign that reads, In counting there is strength referring to the questionable tallying procedures that plagued New York politics at the time. In 1903, I discovered a similar dilemma when I wrote The Shame of Minneapolis, exposing a network of local corruption and bribery that ran deep and wide, from the regulation of gambling to widespread criminal activity of the police. These stories and more can be found in my book The Shame of Cities that was published just earlier this year, which contains a vast collection of my articles documenting my muckraking ventures. But not all is doom and gloom, my friends, for there are those in this country willing to stand up against extortion. Take reformer Walter L. Fisher, president of the Municipal Voters League of Chicago, for example, who waged a long campaign against corrupt politicians, eventually taking control of the city legislature and giving the people of Chicago an honest government. As our culture progresses further, I'm confident we'll see more muckrakers and people like Fisher leave the public to become warriors against malfeasance themselves and bring the U.S. to greater heights. I'm so confident, in fact, that I'm going to use this time machine that I've built journalism has always just been a side gig for me in order to travel to the year 2020 to see just how far our nation has come. Holy sh**. While I am quite flattered that my book has an Amazon listing, America's political world is a whole different story. In fact, there are many parallels between the reporting of muckrakers such as myself to 2020's divided political landscape. Modern muckrakers from the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal still uncover corruption in politics. Under Donald Trump, these reporters write about the destruction of the rule of law under Trump and his Attorney General Bill Barr, who has a broad view of executive power in this branch of government. But what is most alarming is the deafening sound of silence by the collective American public every time they chip away at constitutional norms. As we move closer and closer to authoritarian rule, where is the collective cry from the American people? It appears that in some ways, the values of US civilians have regressed since my time. So to my fellow Americans, I ask that you stop turning a blind eye to what is going on around you. Stand up against the individuals who manipulate and aggravate. We must let our voices be heard for the destruction of this democracy may be closer than you think. <laughs>